video, we're going to construct this impactor instrument rack from scratch. This rack essentially functions as a multi-sample blender, with the capability to randomize certain attributes of each loaded sample. Through the process of creating this rack, we'll be exploring the logic and hierarchy of grouping able 10 devices. Note triggered randomness with the expression control MIDI effect and the inherent flexibility of macro parameters. But before we dive any deeper, let's take a listen. The impactor rack is comprised of several layers, each of which is constructed identically. The only difference is the sample each layer houses at its core. To build our first layer, we'll load a sample onto an empty MIDI track, and convert the resulting simpler into a sampler. We will explain the importance of using sampler later in this demonstration. Before we start building our layer, Let's ensure that the sampler is initialized with these parameter values. Next, we'll group the sampler into an instrument rack, and assign on sample attributes we'd want to affect and randomize. Let's start with pitch. We can find sampler's global transpose parameter by navigating to the pitch and oscillator tab. Let's map this parameter to a macro. Next, let's do the same for stereo panning. Let's navigate to the Filter and Global tab, and macro map the pan randomization parameter, which determines the amount of randomness applied to the sample's stereo pan position. We'll also do the same for the sample's amplitude by mapping the volume parameter to our third macro slot. Let's adjust the minimum and maximum values to limit the dynamic range of our results. One of the options Sampler gives us over Simpler is the ability to reverse the playback of the loaded sample with a single parameter change. Let's map this reverse sample parameter to our fourth macro. Lastly, for an added dimension of variation, we'll create a macro for delaying the sample by a random amount. To accomplish this, we'll add a delay effect inside of our layer instrument rack. Let's change the delay to time mode, set the feedback to zero and make the signal fully wet. We'll also deactivate the delay's filter circuit. By adjusting the time parameter, we are effectively delaying the start of the sample by the indicated millisecond amount. Let's map this parameter to our fifth macro and adjust the maximum value to 500 milliseconds. And just for the fun of it, let's map the delay transition mode parameter to our sixth macro. For the two remaining macro slots, we'll map the sample as attack and decay parameters for amplitude envelope shaping. 
Now that we've macro mapped our sampler, we can introduce parameter randomization with the expression control MIDI effect. When we set an input source to random, each incoming MIDI note causes the expression control to output a random value. We can map this random value trigger to any mappable parameter in life. Expression control offers six unique mapping slots, so let's use all of them to randomize the macros on our sampler. In order to exercise control over this level of randomness, we'll have to get clever with our macro mappings moving forward. Let's combine everything into a new instrument track, and create a pitch randomness macro. Our goal is to create a macro whose minimum value always produces the same result, while the maximum value covers the full range of possible results. We'll map the minimum and maximum parameters of the corresponding pitch map slot to this macro. For the macro's minimum value to produce the same result each time, we need to ensure that the minimum value is the same for both of the mapped parameters. Transpose is a bipolar parameter, which means that its default value is the midpoint between the minimum and maximum value. For our pitch randomness macro to reflect this, we need to navigate to the macro mappings tab, and set both minimum values to 50%. To create a full range of possible modulation, we'll set the max of the minimum parameter to zero, and the max of the maximum to 100%. If done correctly, we should have a pitch randomness macro whose minimum produces the same pitch, and whose maximum produces a full range of random pitches. Now we need to fulfill the same conditions for expression control's remaining slots. Let's create a volume randomness macro first, since it is also a bipolar parameter. Delay transition mode is also bipolar. The rest of our macros are unipolar, which means that their default value is the same as their minimum value. Thankfully, these are much more straightforward to set up. For our pan macro, all we have to do is map the maximum parameter. And as a result, we have created a unipolar macro, which ranges from no randomness, to full randomness. Let's do the same for the reverse and delay time macros. Finally, we'll add the attack and decay parameters to the remaining slots. Now that our layer is complete, let's group it into a drum rack, and assign each macro to its corresponding slot. Let's duplicate the layer, and load a different sample into it. We can use a chord MIDI effect to play both layers with a single incoming MIDI note. The chord effect allows us to play up to seven notes simultaneously. So let's add five more layers. And load unique samples into each of them.
The sheer amount of possibilities can be overwhelming with an instrument like the Impact Iraq. When something is made to produce random results, how can we achieve a sense of artistic ownership over the sounds it creates? There are two main methods, actually, with the first being effects processing. For example, if our primary goal is to create a violent impact sound, we can break it down into separate elements or sub-goals, such as establishing a strong low and presence, creating a punchy dynamic contour, and adding harmonics with distortion. Luckily, we can introduce all of these elements with a single effect. First, we'll create a prominent sub-fundamental with drum buses boom parameter, and fine-tune its frequency and decay time. We'll also engage the built-in compressor circuit and add mid-high frequency transient emphasis with the transients parameter. We can also add distortion with the drive and crunch parameters, as well as choose between different distortion circuits. The second method for establishing creative control is quite simple. It's sample selection. Choosing your samples. And perhaps more importantly, choosing which kinds of samples will greatly affect the sonic characteristics of Impactor's output. Here is an instance where we've replaced a few of the shorter Impact-like samples with longer ambient ones. Here is an example where we've combined both methods into a single workflow. We've filled Impactor with combat hit sound effects, all of which are processed by a vocoder-driven audio effect rack. fundamentally sets Sable 10 apart from other DAWs is its modularity. Life is designed to encourage us to combine its various devices with all their various parameters in hopes of synthesizing workflows and sounds that are infinitely greater than the sum of their parts. The Impactor Rack is an embodiment of this synthesis, both in its architecture and its utility. Choosing samples and audio effects with intention is key to unlocking the full potential of the Impactor Rack. 
Learning and applying sound design techniques with intention is key to unlocking your own creative potential. So practice with purpose.